he sees in that distance of what is going to be. And as I began to study him, I understood and I believe that the race that he is talking about is a long distance race. It's a race that all of us that claim to be a follower are running right now. The race is something different for others than it may be for me, than it may be for you. See, originally, sometimes we study Philippians chapter 3, and we think that Paul is actually giving us direction how to become a believer. But we know that's not the case. He's leading us in a path of a race of running through life as a follower of Jesus Christ. Paul speaks of an athlete. During this time period, Roman athletes had to be a citizen of the city to compete. There was a sense of pride involved in the competing that they had. Because it was almost that if they were to break the rules or to go against what was led before them, they still lived in that same city. It was almost considered a disgrace. So the race that he's referring to is something of a determination. There is a sense of pride in it. But we understand where Paul's maturity in spirituality is knowing that he is not perfect. Of being able to say, I am not perfect. He doesn't compare himself to others, but he compares himself to himself and to Jesus. And that's where we can see in this race that Paul is telling us that each one of you are running this race now. You're not to compare your race to anyone else's. It's your race to run. If you are to compare it, you compare it to yourself. And that's why he speaks of his past, his present, and his future. In his determination, and we find this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, Paul speaks of determination being something that is not just listening to what's taught to you, to reading, to watching. As all of us know, the way to become great at something is to step out there and to do it. My challenge to you this morning, and what I hope that you walk away with, is believing and knowing that you are running the race right now. That you wouldn't leave here with just knowledge given to you, but that you would go out and that you would be a runner. That you would go into this world and that you would run the race that God has laid before you. That you would imagine yourself sitting down, stretching out, looking ahead, not knowing what road you're going to take, what it's going to be like. I remember before I became a believer, life was a little bit easier. I did what I wanted. Nothing really mattered. And as I chose to be a follower of Christ, life became a little bit more difficult. There's moments in scripture that you read things and you're like, no, I don't want to do that. We find ourselves sometimes questioning it. Sometimes I think we take things out of context or sometimes we rip pages out because it's something we don't want to listen to. The path that God has laid before each one of us isn't something that's going to be necessarily easy all the time. You will come across paths that you're running uphill. You're going to come into valleys. You're going to go over rocky surfaces, and sometimes you're going to go over smooth surfaces, and life's going to feel great. But the hope that God leaves us with is knowing that he goes through it with us. Sometimes we get lost, and we tend to avoid situations as we go through life. Why do we avoid those situations? 
I may not know? Why do I come across paths that I do not know? Last week when Jeremiah spoke, Jeremiah spoke on Philippians chapter 4 through 13 on forgetting what was behind you, but allowing it to mold who you are to become. Being able to let go of things that you did maybe in 2010 that you just can't let yourself give that away. He also talked on, and I'm so glad he talked on this. I didn't know what exactly he was going to say. But I loved how he talked about how Paul had to live with who he was. I guarantee you as he walked through life, people didn't let him forget who he was. People knew this was a persecutor of Christians. That he had sentenced many Christians to be killed. They knew this. There would be a sense of uncomfortableness if he entered the room. Imagine standing there. You meet Paul for the first time and you're like, whoa, this is the guy. There's a sense of judgment that falls over us. What he had to go through. Maybe in forgetting 2010, there's something that you need to let go that someone else did to you. They've come, they've asked for the forgiveness, but you haven't given them that. You haven't let go of that. In verses 14 through the end of Philippians chapter 3, Paul refers to the race we've been talking about this morning. And when he talks about striving forward, it's that, that last bit of energy, everything that you've been training for. Some of us have seen on the news and on YouTube or whatever it is that you watch of those runners that are coming to the finish line and they're within, I mean, inches, within feet of the finish line and their body just gives out and they collapse. And you watch them crawl across that finish line. That they gave everything that they had to finish that race. And Paul refers to that in striving for that goal, reaching for it to give everything that you have in your race with Jesus Christ. To run that race to the fullest. This morning, I'm not as comedical as I would be normally, because in understanding and studying Paul I believe this is what he wrote. He didn't put flowers and daisies around it and say, everything's going to be great. No, he came forth and he said, this is what you must do. So in this, I leave you with two things, two things to avoid. The first one, I must not do it all. The second one, God must not do it all. These two things you have to avoid in running the race. I must do it all because, because then it becomes about you. And you leave God completely out of it. The second one, God must do it all. 